right. Well, renovations are starting in this shed. What all I did with it was uh, clean all the grain out of it and blow the walls down. I had that thing just ripping. Put a real big pulley on the motor and worked really good. Now I just got a smaller pulley on it. And this is the very first state. I guess I already cut the door out. And I just lugged this stove in here, even though winter is over now and I don't really need a stove anymore, but might as well have her ready for next winter. It's just fitting the first elbow on there. And at this point, I think I'm going to have the chimney slant like that until it reaches about the middle up there, 18 inches from the roof. Then it's just going to come straight this way and then up and out. Not sure yet. I'm going to have to think about this for. All right, well, I've decided to go straight up to the left until I'm right lined up with that chimney there. Then I'm just going to go on an angle, and then another elbow, and up and out. I think that's the best way to do it. All right. Well, the chimney's done. All screwed on. Even put a couple of uh, straps in a couple of different places to help with supporting it. There's that one and then there's another one on the other side. It's good and solid now. That took a brutally long time to get lined up properly. <laughs> it all worked out. Now it's time to wire. I've had this big fat roll of wire now for a few months waiting for this job. Got a bunch of electrical boxes. Some heavy duty ceiling fan boxes. I finally decided I'm going to put two industrial ceiling fans in here. I was just going to put regular ones, but it's probably going to get pretty hot up at the ceiling and figured that the blades are just going to get really dried out and warped. Might as well have metal ceiling fans. Plus then if the blades get up kind of close to the chimney there, it's no big deal because you got to have any combustible materials 18 inches away from the chimney. I'll have them right lined up with that roof joist there. That'll be perfect. Give me just a little bit of distance from the wall so air can kind of flow. You know, I'm not sure. I'm going to put two, but I might not use this one. We'll have to see how just this one works. Hoping it'll push air down, heat from the stove, and it'll kind of go like this, you know. But I'd like to experiment and have both of them on, see if that works better or not. So I guess I've been thinking about this, and I think, like, this is where my table is going to go. But I think I'm going to put all my switches and stuff right in this area. Do I have a triple gang box? That'd be nice. Got a double. I'm going to put an outlet. Then I'm going to switch. Just like that. Would have nice if I had another double gang. It's another thing too. I don't have two dimmer switches. Oh well. I'll have to think about that along the way here. Well kitty. Looks like a nice thunderstorm over there. Should miss us though, usually everything just heads straight that way. Yeah, come in, get out of the rain. Well, I got my boxes situated here. This is gonna be for the ceiling fans. Now my light switch here, that'll be for all the fluorescents. And then a plug-in right here. Should be all I need for plug-ins. Hopefully anyways, it's not a big deal. I can just run another wire from the main junction here. Have it go somewhere and have another outlet over there if I deem it necessary, because that's where things are going to happen. Like that's I'm going to pull whatever I'm working on in, and then that's where it gets tore apart. But it would be nice to have a trouble light while I'm working on my stuff. Well, this is as far as I've got so far. Eventually I'm going to find a double gang box and another dimmer switch so I can control each fan, but for now I'll just control them both on one. Our main junction here where everything splits out from. Our switch for all the fluorescent lights. And that's where I'm going to start it. Fluorescent lights that I got have knockouts on the end so you can butt them up together and I can't remember how many. It's a certain amount of wattage. And then our outlet and then our exhaust fan switch. We got our switch in. Now for Mr. Outlet. Perfect. I was going to put a little light here. Probably won't for right now. I'll see how the fluorescents are. But my table's going to be right here. And I'm not sure if the fluorescent will be putting enough light straight down onto the table. So I was just going to put a little light on here instead of a cap. And then I could just have it on a pole chain switch. That would have been cool. But whatever. 
we'll leave this like this for now. If I have to, I can just take the morettes off and add another wire in there for the light. That's that. I'm going to work on these lights now. All right. Well, we're just cruising right along here. I just need to get another chunk of Romex, tie into that and this light, and carry on to this light, tie into it. You can see I have the knockout open, Do the same thing I did right there to right here. The other light's going to start about right there. It's going to be right up pretty close to that one. Though I don't think this is up the code, having it like this, but I'm just doing it anyways. But I have a thing that you screw onto the end cap there. You screw it on tight. And then it also has a tightener for the wire so it can tighten down on the wire and secure it. All right, we're a little bit further. Just one more light. All the ballasts in these lights have been replaced. I got a whole bunch, like 50 friggin' lights from my work. They changed them all out to LEDs. So of course I loaded these up in the truck and hauled them home. I wouldn't have took them if they had the original magnetic ballasts in them, but they've all been changed out to electronic ballasts. There was two out of like the 50 lights that I got that still had the original magnetic ballasts in them. <laughs> and I just happened to grab those two when I hauled a bunch here. So now I gotta go get one more. I was gonna put a light over there, but we're just gonna wait on that. We're gonna see if this one here is enough. She's gonna be bright in here, blah. All right, well, the lights are finally finished. Now it's time to install some bulbs. I got a whole whack of these T12s, the old fatties. And these are the only two T8 bulbs on the place. So I guess she's going to have a bunch of T12s. That's okay. I like them better. Alright, got my plug-in rigged up. Trouble light hanging here. Time for the moment of truth. Oh wow, that's really nice. Yeah, that's more than bright enough. Oh, this is awesome. This makes me so happy. It's even lighting up the yard a bit. Now that's one bright shed. And these lights are still breaking in. Give them a few minutes and they'll be twice as bright. There, I turned the brightness down on my camera. You can see how the bulbs are kind of dim in the middle. Those T8s are kind of purple in the middle. Give her a couple of minutes here and she'll be just bright as day. Well, lights are done. It's the next day. It's time to work on the ceiling fans here. And these switches are supposed to be able to handle 5 amps. Can't really see it right there. So it could easily handle two fans, but I just remembered, I have my uh, test rig dimmer switch. And uh, a long time ago I had chopped the ends off here so that I could have it mounted in my bathroom exhaust fan. But I ended up getting rid of that. Then I could have both my fans controlled on a single switch, or on each switch. <laughs> well, if you're like me and you lose absolutely everything, even the J-hook to your industrial ceiling fans. You just gotta find yourself an old bolt that's been laying around since your grandpa owned the shop and give her a nice bend there and make it work. Except this J-hook is way too small. I wouldn't actually be able to mount the fan once the J-hook is bolted into the box. <laughs> so I gotta lug the thing up there and screw it on to the box once I get up there. Probably would have been easier if I didn't put the blades on first, but I just like to do goofy stuff like that. I got these light aluminum Evergo style blades on it. I need a wrench now. Okay, back to the shop. Oh. Master keys work great for popping open the electrical cover things. Alright, now for the second one.
looks like I mounted my box just a touch too far to the right. Oh, well, maybe not. Well, that one over there didn't have a plug-in on it, so it's just got the wire straight into the box. But this one here had its plug-in on it still, and I really didn't want to have to cut it off, so we're making an outlet right up beside the box here. There we go. Perfect. Put the canopy back up and we're done. All right, time for a test run. Trying to figure out where it stalls out. I'll adjust that later. So shut that one off. Test out this one with its rubby switch. I think the dimmer switch is broken, it's stuck on high. Hmm, I'll have to mess with it. Alright. <clears throat> Dad and his fancy Honda. <laughs> That's when you just gotta dig around, mess it all up so the J-hook ain't on the thing anymore. At least I've got these light aluminum, uh, for trying to light 